So we've mentioned before on the channel how gemology is a relatively young field of study compared to some of the older, more developed sciences. It should come as no surprise, then, that many now-famous gemstones were discovered fairly recently, even within the last hundred years. Today, we're gonna go down a timeline of some of the most notable gemstone discoveries of the 20th century. Our timeline begins in 1902, Waidananda, in Lightning Ridge, Australia. This now famous locale is the site of the first discovery of black opal. The first mine shafts were dug here by Jack Murray and Charles Nettleton, and a year later, Nettleton sold his first parcel of black opal for a mere $30. By the 1920s, black opal production had declined, but saw a resurgence in the late 50s with the introduction of machination. Black Opal saw another boost in the 80s and 90s with demand from the Asian market. Since its original discovery, Black Opal has been found in a few other places around the world, like Nevada in the US, Hungary, and recently in Ethiopia. In 1902, another discovery was being made on the other side of the world. Kunzite, the pink variety of spodumene and the most famous variety, was found in trace amounts in Connecticut, but the first commercially viable deposit was in California. It's named after the legendary gemologist and gemstone author George Frederick Kuhns. Kunzite is sometimes referred to as the evening stone because its color can fade in sunlight. Fun fact, the stone was originally to be named after prominent money man J.P. Morgan, but he couldn't be contacted in time for permission to use his name. But don't worry, he got his stone and it's on this list. We're staying in California for this next gemstone, Benitoite. Okay, imagine having a failing melon farming business, turning to prospecting out of desperation, and discovering one of the rarest gemstones in the world. That is exactly what happened to James Marshall Couch in 1907. Benitoite is named after the only commercially viable locale in the world, San Benito County, California. It's so rare that this mine has only produced about 5,000 carats of faceted material over its entire lifetime and stones are usually less than one carat. Our next gemstone was discovered in 1911, and it isn't quite as rare. Morganite was found initially in Madagascar, but commercial deposits have been found in Afghanistan, China, Brazil, Russia, and the US. As the name suggests, this was the year that JP Morgan got his stone. It was George Kunz's idea to honor the financier and gem collector by naming the stone after him. Maybe he felt like he owed him after the whole Kunzite thing. This next gem was technically discovered in 1904, but gem quality crystals weren't discovered until 1958 in the Wawa Mountains of Utah. Originally named Bixbite after Maynard Bixby, it's now referred to as Red Barrel to avoid confusion with the other mineral named after the same guy, Bixbyite. Somebody messed up somewhere. Either way, this gemstone is even more rare than Benitoite. According to the Utah Geological Survey, one red barrel is found for every 150,000 diamonds. And most red barrel crystals are less than one carat and too included to facet. No wonder it was only discovered in the last 70 years. Next is a member of the popular Garnet Group. This minty green garnet was originally spotted in Zimbabwe in 1961, then rediscovered in Tanzania in 1967. After being unable to secure an export permit, Campbell Bridges, the man who first found the stone, was forced to expand his search to Kenya, where he found another deposit in the Savo region, giving the stone its name. Mining savorite is tricky though. Seams of the material will suddenly disappear without giving much of a clue as to where to look next. Sometimes savorite will be trapped inside quartz or scapolite lumps known as potatoes. And these taters have to get mashed in order to get to the green garnet goodies inside. Tanzania was the place to be in 1967 because that same year was when tanzanite was first discovered. This now famous blue violet stone was found at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro by the very same Campbell Bridges while doing consulting work for Tiffany. Show me someone who had a better 1967 than Campbell Bridges. Since its discovery, tanzanite has exploded in popularity to the point where it's been added as a birthstone for December. Okay, so this next stone was actually first mentioned in a rejected mining request from 1916. It wasn't mined and really discovered until 1974 though. I'm talking about Larimar. Originally, it was assumed it came from the ocean given the abundance of it on the seashore, but after following the river back up the mountain, the true source was found in Barahona, Dominican Republic. 
Its name is a combination of the name Larissa and Mar, the Spanish word for sea. It was given that name by Miguel Mendez for the two things he loved most, his daughter and the sea. This next gemstone is found in a region with such brutal weather that it can only be mined a few months out of the year. Chrome diopside was discovered in 1988 in Siberia, where other than the few warmest months of the year, it's just too cold and hostile to mine. Exportation of this stone began after the fall of the Berlin Wall, which was in 1989. This bright green stone is often a bit included, but it's a great alternative to emerald if you don't have big three money. The last stone on our list was discovered in 1989 in Brazil and is one of the most valuable gemstones in the world. And when I say valuable, I'm talking $20,000 per carat for top quality stones. It's none other than the vivid electric blue variety of tourmaline known as Paraíba tourmaline. It was discovered by a miner named Eitor Dimas Barbosa in Paraíba, Brazil. Since then, stones of similar composition and color have been found in Mozambique and Nigeria. There are some that argue that these new finds shouldn't be called Paraíba tourmaline since they're not from that locale, but I kind of feel like if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, you see where I'm going with this. Well, those are our top 10 gemstone discoveries for the 20th century. Would you like to see us do another video like this in the future? Let us know down in the comments and let me know which of these gems today was your favorite. I think mine is tanzanite. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching.